Hi, I'm Steve Croft, host for the 9091 edition of Syracuse in Review. As a correspondent for CBS News, I've been witness to many sweeping changes in the world since my days at Syracuse. And Syracuse, too, has changed, being a far cry from the turn of the century ivy covered tower on a hill that Pulitzer Prize winning writer John Hersey described in his novel, The Call. In the next few minutes, with the help of some fellow alumni, I'm going to bring you a little closer to what's happening at the Syracuse University of today as it moves through the last decade of the century. Beginning will be CNN's Washington correspondent, David French, who will explore the pursuit of excellence at Syracuse. Dave? Thanks, Steve. I'm here in the New Science and Technology Center, a state-of-the-art focal point for teaching and research at Syracuse that underscores the university's commitment to the continued development of its resources and facilities. Home to many of the university's technology-oriented programs and departments, the center is outfitted with powerful processing computers, sophisticated laboratories, and high-tech clean rooms. With world-class computing experts on the faculty like Jeffrey Fox, Syracuse is strengthening its undergraduate programs in physics and computer science. Another boost in the technology-related areas has been provided by alumnus Chris Gentile, a visionary engineer in the emerging field of virtual reality and developer of the Nintendo Power Glove. Chris recently announced his sponsorship of a major initiative to fund undergraduate research in engineering at Syracuse. And we let a student group put together a team that won't be one discipline, will be multidiscipline, and I will handle them just like how I hand an outside engineering firm. We actually develop a project and some of these students will actually see their project get developed and actually sold into the consumer market. That's what we're hoping for. 